OK, so what we're going to do now is talk about, now we know the Big Bang happened. We know how far, how long ago it happened. OK, what are some of the key things that happened after the Big Bang? OK, now if you're going to ask what was there before the Big Bang, we don't have as many answers to that, of course. We're, they're working on different models of the universe and whatever, but we don't know what was there before the Big Bang. Where did the universe come from? What caused the Big Bang? Those are some deeper questions, you know. But we do know something exploded, so there was something there. It exploded, and then the universe came into being. But exactly what caused it to explode, what was there before that, that's still arguable. You see the difference? We don't know before, OK? But we do know the events afterwards. Spontaneous symmetry breaking is the first thing. At the beginning, when the universe was just very, very tiny, small, it had a lot of energy there. And it had one force of nature called the mother force. And we, we, give it, we call it TOE, theory of everything. Because if we can understand that mother force, okay, we will have understood the theory of everything. Okay? String theory is one model that tries to explain the theory of everything, okay? tries to s understand the nature of that mother force. Uh, to date, yet, it's not completely agreed upon, the different models of the string theory. So we're not completely saying it's correct yet. There are p some people, scientists that are saying, we should dump string theory, go and make a new theory of everything, you see? So it says, at the beginning, the universe only had one force, which is called theory of everything. As the universe cooled, so just as the explosion happened, immediately what's happening is the universe is cooling. And this one mother force is splitting. OK, so we can look at this. And then I'm going to also put this similar graph on the board. Uh, it's saying here, this is the mother force. Initially, all four forces are believed to have been equally strong. This era will eventually be described by a theory of everything. You see? And then at that time, we believe the universe is 10 to the 32 Kelvin. It's very, very hot. OK? Then what happens? The explosion takes place, gravity becomes its own identity, its own separate force. Gravity is important in forming stars, in making planets go around stars, you see? So gravity takes on its own identity. So it says gravity became a distinct force weaker than the other GUT forces. So if gravity separated, now we're left with one less force, and this force is known as the Grand Unified Theory, GUT. Gut. So in this, in this era, we call it the gut force. The temperature dropped to 10 to the 27 Kelvin. And this happened at 10 to the minus 35 seconds. I mean, the events are taking place very, very fast right after the explosion. Before you even close your eye and open your eye, all this has already taken place. OK? Then the next force is separating out. The strong force became distinct from the electroweak force. Strong force separates. What is the meaning of the strong force? What's the goal of the strong force now? What does it do? It keeps the protons in the nucleus from repelling each other. If the strong force didn't exist, we wouldn't exist. What would happen to the, nucle the nucleuses in our bodies? Our bodies are made up of atoms which have neutrons in it and protons in it, right, in the nucleus. If the strong force didn't exist, those protons would all repel each other. All our atoms would be extinguished. We would die right away. So strong force is very important, just as gravity is important. Okay? So it's almost as if the universe right away was designed for intelligent life form, to make life, you see. Um, then what happens? This force is left. And do we call that the electroweak force, electroweak. Electroweak force is the combination of the electromagnetic force and the weak nuclear force, okay? Electroweak. So then what happens? 10 to the 15 Kelvin, the weak force separates out. 
weak force, 10 to the minus 12 seconds. What's left? The electromagnetic force. Do you need both of those forces to live? Yeah. The weak force you need because it uh, mediates radioactive decay. It mediates hydrogen fusion. Okay, so without that, you can't have the sun producing energy. So weak force is important for life. Okay. The reason we call it the weak force is because it's weaker than the strong force. Strong force is much stronger than the weak. Okay. Do you need electromagnetic force? Oh yeah, without electromagnetic force, there would be no such thing as charges. Uh, electrons wouldn't go around protons. And of course, without that, you wouldn't have life either. So you need all four of these distinct forces to separate out and become their own. And so now we have four forces in nature. So right away, they split off. That event is known as spontaneous symmetry breaking. Okay, we could also put that similar graph here and then refer to it as we go over the notes. See here, separate out. So it says, at t equals 10 to the minus 43 seconds, see right here, and temperature 10 to the 32 Kelvin, gravity splits off. The combination of the other three forces is called gut. So that's this one here. Gut, grand unified theory, force. At 10 to the minus 35 seconds and temperature 10 to the 27 Kelvin, the strong nuclear force splits off. Okay, so that one is the red one uh, here. And then the red, this one is called electroweak force. The combination of the remaining forces is called electroweak. And 10 to the minus 12 seconds and temperature 10 to the 15 Kelvin, the weak nuclear force splits off. Now we have four forces. After that, no other forces split off. So they, after that, you just have the universe expanding and doing other things. Okay. In the meantime, as the universe is expanding, it's cooling. So you look how hot it starts, 10 to the 32 Kelvin. Now the average temperature of the universe is 3 Kelvin. You see? That's weird. 3 Kelvin is like so cold, it's like 3 degrees above absolute zero. Of course, there are stars and planets that are very hot, 50,000 Kelvin, 30,000 Kelvin. Some planets are 1,000 Kelvin, you see? But if you average all the temperature of the universe, the temperature of empty space, the temperature of vacuum and everything, the universe as a whole is a cold place, you see? So when we say the, the temperature of the universe is 3 Kelvin, we're averaging out everything, you see? Why is it so cold? because of this effect, you see? What tends to happen as space expands and galaxies are radiating, you see, as a space expands, it stretches the light waves moving through it, increasing their wavelength, you see? So when you have first very small space, the wavelength is very short. Short wavelength means what? We learned in the electromagnetic spectrum chapter. Short wavelength means high frequency, high energy. You see? So the original energy of the universe is very, very high frequency, very high energy. As the universe is expanding, it's tending to increase the wavelength, you see? So long wavelength implies the universe is cooling. So as the universe is growing, growing, in the next billion years, it's going to get cooler. It'll be two Kelvin, maybe. Then it'll be cooler and cooler, one Kelvin, half a Kelvin. Eventually, when the universe is so large, all it will have is just black holes in there, just radiating, and the universe will be almost absolute zero degrees. And then we're going to have to find another universe to live. Okay? So it's just going to cool. Unless, of course, the universe recollapses on itself. Then it starts warming again. You see? So maybe that's, that's what we got to try to do, is make it recollapse somehow.
But that's going to be hard to do because we're going to have to fight dark energy. Dark energy causes the universe to accelerate. Okay. Uh, let's see what else. Just on this point, as a final note, this is also another interesting way to visualize this. You see? Enormous energies are required to unify the four forces of nature. It is thought the four forces were once unified at the higher energies characteristics of the universe soon, after the Big Bang. And indeed, the theory that unifies the weak force and the electromagnetic force has already been verified for energies of a few hundred giga electron volts. Okay, have you guys heard of particle accelerators? Fermi, Stanford, the uh, famous one is in Geneva. Okay. What do particle accelerators do? They are these huge places, on, uh, sometimes underground or above ground, you know, and then they accelerate particles to very high energies. Their goal is to reproduce the conditions that existed at the high energies. You see, 10 to the 15, 10 to the 19, the most highest energy. So far, they've been able to reproduce the energies of the electroweak force, you see? So what this graph is showing you is the energy here, and then as time went on, what happened? This is the theory of everything. Then as the energies got weaker, the gravity split off. You see, gravity split off. Look at what, what's happening to gravity. The strength of gravity is weak. So the vertical graph is showing the strength of the force. Gravity force became the weakest force among all four. As the energy went off, gravity went down in strength. This is the grand unified force, This, the three of the forces. So what's happening to their strength? As the energy is getting weaker, they're getting stronger. And then all of a sudden, the strong force splits off, you see? So it's going like this. Let me draw the arrow. This is kind of like how time is going. Theory of everything, and then gravity splits off. And then this one, GUT. And then strong force splits off. Which one of the four forces is, is the strongest? Strong force is the strongest. Why? It's got to be the strongest because if it's not very strong, those protons in the nucleus will repel each other will die right away, okay? It has to glue them together. That's what the purpose of the strong force is. Okay, now this force is getting weaker. That's the electroweak force. Electroweak. And then after that, the weak force goes down. Electromagnetic force goes like that. The weak force and electromagnetic force are kind of close together in strength. The electromagnetic is a little stronger. So in those particle accelerators, when we bombard particles together, we're producing very high energies. So far, we've been able to produce the electroweak force. And then what happens? New particles pop up when we produce those energies. Okay? New particles, very heavy particles pop up. Like they're called, one of them is called bosons, WZ bosons. Okay? Though we were able to discover those particles in the late 1900s. Okay? Now we're working on producing the energy of the gut force. We haven't gotten there yet, but we're going to produce the energies of the gut force, understanding the, uh, the, the, what the universe was like, what particles existed at those high energies. And then eventually, if we get there, we'll produce the energies of the beginning of the universe and see what particles exis exist there. Okay? Now, last year, we do have a confirmed new particle, the Higgs particle, which we're going to be even more confirmed through time. It's called the God particle. Okay? So uh, as, as you go on in time, you're going to see the discoveries of new and new particles, and we're going to get higher and higher energies.